What's up everyone, it's Gaddy with Money Vesting. So welcome on board to yet another market open live stream. So we are gonna get started here. Just give me a thumbs up if you guys can see me and hear me and we should be all set and good to go. Uh, let's take a look at the NASDAQ here. We were down, we are still down a little bit over 27 basis points right now. Uh, Pre-market, we got the S&P 500 ETF. So SPY is also pulling back a little bit over 10 basis points. And the Dow Jones, I think, is mostly flat to green, uh, just about down six basis points. We did get the jobs report, which we are going to cover here in just a minute. So welcome on board, everyone. Thank you so much for joining. Um, so we're going to cover the jobs report, and then we're going to cover some upgrades, downgrades, and of course, go over individual companies, oil prices. Cryptos have just been falling here recently. And as a result, a lot of the crypto mining stocks have just been selling off as well. And volatility is rather flat after the rally that we saw a couple days ago. They were spiking a little bit to the upside. So thanks again for joining. I do have the chat right here. So I will be looking to my right here. Um, just kind of reading your guys' comments. And uh, we'll get started. So I'll let just allow a few more minutes to join for people to join here. Uh, but for the most part, uh, you know, there's a lot of stocks here pushing higher. AMC is up over 5%. So very nice push the upside GME so GameStop is up over 24% so decent rallies for those companies here uh, pre-market so all right let's take a quick look at this quote uh, I want to go over first so this uh, something that I shared in our discord as well in our market updates channel uh, value investing so this is a quote from Benjamin Graham <clears throat> and this will sound familiar if you've been part of the channel this will sound familiar to you as well the intelligent investor realizes that stocks become more risky not less as their prices rise and less risky not more as their prices fall that is my favorite quote from benjamin Graham. probably my favorite quote in the markets in general because that is so true right every stock is an asset that's what that's how we have to look at it these are all assets that we own and the higher it gets the riskier it gets the lower it gets the less risky it becomes from an investment standpoint. So I think it's a very, very important for us to constantly remind ourselves that when prices come down, it's good news. When we see red in the markets, that's great news. Uh, and of course, quality companies coming down is always uh, gonna be as a result of stocks getting less risky from an investment standpoint. So great quote, I love it. I hope you guys enjoy that too as well. So this right here is going to be the jobs number. First of all, I want to mention that I put out a Patreon specific video. These are private videos, fundamental analysis and three red flags to watch when you're doing fundamental analysis. So again, if you want to get access to private videos like these, the link to our Patreon is going to be down in the description below. You know, you get access to our discord, the market updates, the buy and sell alerts, the trade ideas, tutorials on fundamental technical analysis like this one. We have covered over seven tutorials so far. So you can watch them at your free time. And these go over, uh, you know, valuation multiples, qualitative analysis, price action, technical charts, all that stuff. So this is a video that I posted today and there's more to come, um, you know, later this month and going into February and later this year as well. So talking about uh, the jobs number. So hiring falters in December as payrolls rise only 199,000 through the unemployment uh, rate fell down to 3.9%. So non-farm payrolls grew by 199,000 while unemployment rate fell to 3.9%. Uh, that compared to Dow Jones estimate of 422,000. That's a big miss for non-farm payrolls. And the Dow Jones estimate has almost always been wrong. They've never been able to accurately predict the actual jobs number, which is quite pathetic. But payrolls number uh, at 4.1% unemployment rate here. That was the expectations on employment coming down a little bit more. Uh, job creation was highest in leisure and hospitality, a Q recovery sector, which added 53,000 jobs and professional business services contributed 43,000 while manufacturing added 26,000 uh, as well. So that's the jobs number here. Average hourly earnings did rise more than expected as US sees its fastest inflation pace in nearly 40 years. So wages rose 60 basis points for the month and were up 4.7%. Uh, year over year, and inflation is up a little bit over 6.2%. So we're still uh, not quite fully sort of combating inflation with the wage increases. Wage increases are still trailing behind inflation. And that compares to respective estimates of 0.4% and 4.2% year over year as well. Uh, so that's that. While establishment service showed much lower than expected job gains, the household count total a different story with a gain of 651,000. There were also uh, upward revisions from prior months 
with the final October tally pushed up to 640,000, an increase of 102,000, while November's disappointing report gained 39,000 in the first revision to 249,000 as well. So going over to some of the upgrades and downgrades, uh, we're going to quickly go over this. I'm just going to read some comments here. So Christian, yes, you're right. It's less risky when they come down, but there's way too much uncertainty right now. So yes, I do agree with the current dynamics that we're in. There is definitely um, lots of uncertainty. So let's see. Have a nice Friday, everyone. Yes, so everybody have a great Friday and hope you have a fantastic um, weekend as well. Uh, class is back. Yes, so today is going to be the last day. I, I called uh, the, the hospital and they said that you got to wear it for at least two to three days. So I think I you know better be on the safe side. So today is the last day that I'm actually wearing the glasses here. Uh, let's see. Google this class here, share which uh, wedding rights. True. All right, cutting off uh, one or two. Uh, so SDG, I'm not sure. You should be able to do it through Google Pay. Um, uh, you can probably try it again, but we'll take a look at Walgreens as well. Queen, green, uh, we'll take a look at WBA. But Wells Fargo upgraded AT&T to equal weight from underweight. This is a stock that I've actually been watching very closely as it continues to sell off. 8%, 9% dividend deal is definitely not less. And in an environment where inflation is over 6%, at and uh, you know, if you guys know me, I like stocks that not only have a nice dividend, but also have opportunity for capital appreciation, right? I just don't want to bet on that dividend, but I also want to have some capital appreciation. at and coming down to such low prices, I think I'm going to do an analysis on this stock very soon to really understand whether it's worth buying at these levels, just given that 8 to 9% yield, which of course is going to cut down to even more, uh, roughly 5 to 6% after they actually go through with their uh, merger and their spinoff for uh, for uh, what they're doing later this year with Discovery as well. So Raymond James uh, names Facebook, Amazon, and Alphabet top 2022 picks. All three companies I own and I'm bullish on for this year. So that's great. Mizzou downgrades a visa to neutral from a buy. I also own visa, but unfortunately, they are getting a little bit of a downgrade. Uh, concerns that growth may start to slow down for a visa. Uh, City names Micron Technology as a top pick in 2022. Then we got RBC naming Palo Alto Networks and CrowdStrike as top 2022 picks. I really want to own CrowdStrike, but not at these valuations. I'm going to allow it to let it cool off a little bit and definitely come down so I can start a position in CrowdStrike. Mizzou names Amazon, Facebook, and Uber as top 2022 picks. So of course, Amazon, Facebook, two of the stocks that I own. City adds positive catalyst to watch on NVIDIA. Uh, there sees several positive catalysts for NVIDIA in 2022. We are adding NVIDIA to Cities. Catalyst watch list post CES Consumer Electronics Show. Management commented strong holiday gaming season, solid data center demand, and gaming networking foundry supply to improve in the second half of this year uh, as well. Uh, yes, I'm still buying Mara. Uh, I am. I will be buying more. Uh, all crypto mining stocks are down big. Yes, that's as a result of Bitcoin just coming down, Ethereum coming down as well. So, you know, if you can't handle that heat with, with cryptos and volatility, then, you know, there's plenty of other opportunities elsewhere. But uh, I do believe that this uh, it, it represents some opportunities to kind of dollar cost average for crypto in general and crypto related stocks as well. Bank of America upgrades Delta Airlines to buy from neutral. Then we got Bank of America upgrading Discovery to buy from neutral. Morgan Stanley reiterating Apple as overweight. Uh, and that pretty much wraps up our upgrades and downgrades for the day. Let's take a quick look on the uh, markets here. So let's take a look at the Bitcoin first. So Ethereum breaking under 3,300. So we are just at over 3,200, big drop of over 5.7% for Ethereum here. Uh, let's take a look at Bitcoin. So we are now under 42,000. So we are breaking under 42,000 here, down a little bit over 3%. That next support, unfortunately, I obviously know nobody wants to hear that, but it's sitting at $30,000. That is the next technical support. However, you know, we may see some buyers kind of step in at these levels right here, close to 37,000. Previous support level evaluated coming in from August of 21 before uh, pushing higher. But from a technical standpoint, $30,000 is the next strongest support for BTC. Are we going to get down to those levels? Who knows, right? We could if there's some negative catalyst that comes out, some more selling pressure. But eventually, as I've mentioned before, I, I do expect Bitcoin to uh to recover to, to back to all-time highs and of course possibly up to hundred thousand uh, dollars as well now there is going to be some risk with a lot of these companies like clean spark somebody mentioned that they're now under nine dollars a share they've just been selling off pretty aggressively from highs of 23 dollars down a little bit over 64 percent uh you know of course riot is down to 20 dollars pre-market we're just literally flat out at 20 dollars and from all-time highs of 80 bucks we're down over 74 percent 
Not to mention that Mara is down to $20. By the way, this right here is or should be a support uh, for Mara. So if you come over here to our chart, uh, pretty strong support in the $27, $20 range. So you'll notice that I pinpointed this circle right here. Uh, we did have some buyers step in. So yesterday's low was $27 right on the dot. So we did have some buyers step in at those levels. Uh, and right now, Marathon Digital is literally at support uh, at the moment. So I am excited of dollar cost averaging. I'm up to like uh, 400 shares or something in this company. Uh, and I do plan on buying at least up to a thousand shares for Marathon. But again, it's super risky. Don't follow me into this trade. Please don't, right? If you're part of our Discord, if you're part of our Patreon, if you've been getting these alerts, don't follow me into this because um, it is risky, right? And if you can't handle that, then of course, there's plenty of other opportunities out there. Uh, but you know, my plan is to get up to at least a thousand shares uh, in 2022 for Marathon Digital. Uh, it's still dollar cost averaging. So, all right, let's see. Um, what is what is Doge Bear 2021? Uh, where did you see that? Oh, you saw it over here? Wow. Quick eye for Andre. This is actually a Dogecoin bear token. So, and this is three times levered. Uh, so if you are bearish on Dogecoin, you can actually trade this, um, which uh, I think it should be available on uh, a different platform. But yeah, somebody caught it. I'm pretty surprised somebody saw it. Um, but yeah, that's a good catch. But I've, re I've never really gone over this, um, you know, for the most part. This is only if you are bearish on Dogecoin in general. So, you know, something to look out for. Something interesting if you're if you're into that stuff. So, uh, all right. So, <laughs> Nicholas, Caddy seems to have unlimited cash. I don't. I don't. I got to save up for, for some expenses that are coming up. Let's take a look at Coinbase here. So, Coinbase also selling off. Not a surprise as Bitcoin drops, Ethereum drops. Coinbase also follows that same trend uh, from 367. We did exit this position in the 300s um, not too long ago. I do plan on buying once again because I do think this is a bit of an overreaction here for um, for Coinbase. So I think 219, 215 around these levels, it's going to be a strong support. 244 is not going to turn into resistance for the company right now. So we'll keep a close eye at Coinbase as well. I think it's definitely come down to very, very interesting levels here. Um, at $231. So uh, so Gamer99, we will be revisiting uh, Coinbase very soon. I think it's come down to very attractive levels here uh, at $231. Talking about upstart, so George asks, can you see upstart dropping at mid 80s or low 90s? Um, that would be, in my opinion, a very, very attractive levels and uh, something that you can pass up on because the fundamentals have been very strong for, for upstart. Uh, you guys know this trade worked out for us in 2021. You know, we were in at 110 and then obviously we sold. Um, Caddy, can you, you need to speak closer to the mic. I'm a little bit further away from the screen just because I'm keeping a distance from, you know, because obviously my screen time is limited. Uh, but hopefully you guys can hear me okay. Uh, hopefully I'm able to speak loud enough that you can hear me. But upstart, um, I think $107 is that first support all the way down to $87. Those right there are going to be two support levels to watch for upstart. I think the valuation definitely has taken a beating, but that's more than deserved for the company to come down because this was just ridiculous levels. And I still remember I put out a video going over how this was the one stock that we need to avoid. Don't invest in my view in this company because the valuation just got out way too out of hand, right? And uh, $107 out of $87 next to support levels, it's very possible for it to come down to like $90 to $80 per share. I think I wouldn't be surprised um, to see that. Uh, when does your screen time limit end? We need more. Yes, Dalton, I love that. So my screen time will probably end after one month. Um, the glasses come off today. Uh, I just, I can't, I can't take these glasses anymore. I, they're super funny, but at the same time, I just can't take them anymore. Um, and uh, and then the screen time will probably increase over time, but I think after one month, I should be okay. Um, but right now, there's just too many limitations on me right now with, with, with the with the things that I can and cannot do. But anyway, less than four minutes left for the markets to open. I want you guys to comment. What do you think the markets are gonna do today? Green or red? Let me know in the live chat. And again, this week has obviously been very brutal with the NASDAQ absolutely falling off a cliff. We're down a little bit over 7%. Still not yet in that correction territory. Uh, I think we are roughly over 7% down from all time highs. So 408 to about 384, we're down just over 6%. I think the NASDAQ is down a little bit more. So mostly people seem to be bearish, red, red, red. Only one person's green so far, so that's Josh. A little bit optimistic over there, but for the most part, there is plenty of red 
Um, and this right here, we're down just over 6.8%. So validated that 14,900 support. Uh, you know, if you do get that breakdown, which is very possible, um, wouldn't be surprised for us to see 14,100. That's gonna be that next level to watch for, for the NASDAQ, right? Double bottom here for, for this index. And the S&P 500, of course, is, uh, let's say down uh, just about 2%. 2.6% from all-time high, so not a big, not a whole lot. So going over to the VIX, volatility is just flat, just up over 1%, um, you know, just stabilizing a little bit now at close to 19, 18 levels. We did, we were trading as low as 16, and definitely we have seen some spike here um, for the VIX, but again, watching 25 up to 29 levels, we will be a buyer at those levels. I'm ready if the volatility spikes, if the markets come down, we are ready, but if we do come down, uh, back down to 15 or lower, 12 levels, then, you know, I wouldn't be surprised um, to kind of trim some profits and take some off the table. Uh, all right, so let's see. So opinion on Harry Dent's prediction of up to a 90% crash this year. I've actually not read up or looked at that prediction yet. So if you have any links, just feel free to share with us. Uh, but 90% crash seems a little bit, uh, you know, a bit too exaggerated. 90% would be, would create absolute chaos. I don't think they've ever seen a 90% crash um, in the markets. Maybe even like 75% or 80% is what we have seen, but 90% is just insane. Uh, let's take a look at OSTK. So overstock, I think somebody mentioned this before. We have done some analysis on the company. Um, and for the most part, there's been a lot of consolidation from $113 resistance. We've gone tagged at that level a couple of times. Support level at close to 47 to as high as $61 per share. So, you know, we got validated here a couple of times and we got a breakdown recently. So $47, what I would watch next for this for this company. Uh, quarterly revenue seems to be very stable with a decent profit margin. And, and annually, the revenues have been growing from 1.8 to over 2.5 billion. Uh, but year to date, the stock is obviously not performing well right now. Um, <clears throat> so Malat says Dent has been predicting a crash for the past 20 years. <laughs> He's just crazy. Um, so Rafi, good morning, Caddy. Those jobs report is good for bad for the market. So that's a great question. So we obviously did not add as many jobs as we forecasted. However, the unemployment rate still came down. That is just another way for the Fed to get the green light to go ahead with their accelerated taper and go ahead with the interest rate hikes because unemployment rate remains low and it's still down. It's kind of a weird type of economy where you have the JOLS numbers still high. We still have over 10 million job openings, but at the same time, unemployment rates at over, uh, you know, under 4%, but we're also not adding as many jobs as anticipated. So it's kind of like a very weird situation in the markets right now, in the economy in general and jobs. And, you know, we covered Kathy Wood earlier and how she kind of perceived the jobs numbers. She said that more and more people are, especially the young generation, is foregoing those traditional jobs or relieving their engineering positions to kind of go explore what they can do with DeFi and decentralized finance and blockchain and whatnot. So I think that's really what's taking away most of the jobs here, uh, or in other words, is not able to fill those jobs and they're moving away um, on their own, right? So that's why there's so many job openings uh, in the market right now in, in the US at over 10, 11 million. But anyway, the markets are open now. So we're gonna switch over to the actual indices here. So. Oop, my bad. I don't know what I did there. So, all right, NASDAQ, we got the S&P right here. We got the Dow Jones. We're gonna switch over to the five minute charts. And mostly people were red. So we'll see how where we end up. I wouldn't be surprised if we do end up red <laughs> on the day with the week also uh, being being a strong close to the downside. But NASDAQ is just over 15,070. So let's see, are those Apple glasses? No, these are not Apple glasses. These are, these are not VR goggles either. These are simple black glasses uh just gotta wear them for last today's the last day that i gotta wear them and that's it uh let's take a look at alibaba so alibaba seems to be on a nice push upwards up over three and a half percent back over 131 dollars so 129 is actually going to turn into a support let's just quickly go over our chinese stocks first um and uh wow my eyes cannot believe this we are green for many chinese stocks so alibaba is up over three and a half percent um, then we got JD.com up over 2.3%. Um, and then we got DD slightly up over 1%. Neo's also just under 29.50. And Baidu up close to 2%. Tencent will open here shortly, but NetEase is also up over 3%. So, so yeah, very strong move to the upside. Support level now is going to be 129. This is going to turn into a support for Alibaba. 
Uh, and I think we still have a lot of work to do with Alibaba, but year to date, I mean, this stock, look at that, 10% already in 2022. Pretty strong gains, right? Uh, in, in 2022 so far. But, all right, let's take a quick scan on the markets here. Uh, let's see. So Roku down almost 6%. Oof, Mara down another 5%. So absolutely getting destroyed here with Bitcoin coming down over 3%. So so out of all the uh, you know crypto-related stocks, we got Mara down over 5%. Riot's down over 4.5%. BITO is down over 35 Then we got Grayscale Bitcoin Trust, which is delayed. So it's going to open in about 15 minutes. But CleanSpark keeping up. Clean Spark is actually not that not that red, only down about 84 basis points. Uh, but yeah, Mara getting absolutely hit here, down over 4.4%. Um, so yeah, support level somewhere between $27 and $30. Anything inside this green circle, right, is going to be that support for Mara, Mara right now. Enphase has also been, been one of those stocks that have been selling off. So just a big, big rally all the way up to 279 and then right back down to 150s. So this has been a jump of 95% and then a drop of close to 46%. Typical growth, high multiples name. Visa downgraded today by Mizu Securities coming down over 1.4%. 220 was a resistance, so we are getting tagged and coming back down. Uh, PayPal is down over 80 basis points. Square down a little bit over 30. Netflix coming down. Walgreens pulling back. What is green? So GME is green the most. So GameStop. Up a little bit over 15%. Then we got AMC, Trade Desk, Alibaba pushing up, Astro Space up to 623. Uh, I think they were they had a hit job by a short seller. Uh, obviously, that's one of the reasons why they were hitting a new 52-week low, new all-time low yesterday. Uh, then we got Baidu, Paysafe, Robinhood, Robinhood. Absolutely just selling off. But I think DraftKings was doing well pre-market. I just want to see where they are right now. So up just over 66 basis points. I think they did win something or they uh, they opened up yep so rush trade interactive to launch mobile sports betting in new york so said so thursday in separate releases that they will roll out their respective mobile and online sports book in new york on saturday and the move follows the state's gaming commission approval for mobile and online sports betting last april and the launch comes ahead of the nfl playoffs so big big news for DraftKings, and possibly this can trigger some type of reversal here uh very soon because the stock has obviously been uh, on the selling spree coming down to new 52 week lows, it just turned $24. All right, let's take a look at Palantir uh, for Avi. Uh, Palantir under $17 had a bear flag, then we got that breakdown under $17. So this is going to turn into a resistance right now. Next support at $14.45. Um, and this stock is, you know, very similar to some of the higher growth, higher multiple names like DraftKings, Fubo TV, Tattooed Chef, some of those companies that have just been selling off. Um, and they've also been shorted, right? Palantir is also one of those stocks that has been shorted heavily um, and is still not being loved by Wall Street, right? This is another stock that obviously is uh, on Wall Street has a lot of sell ratings. So AT&T, we will cover in a separate video. I do have plans on going over that in a lot more detail. I'll do like a fundamental analysis on it because I do like where the stock is trading at. Uh, of course, it's seen a nice rally back higher from $22, uh, but just given the yield and the potential for capital appreciation, uh, I do like at and I'll, I'll just need to kind of go over that fundamentals and, and go over the company and the debt levels. And that's one of the very few things that kind of concerns me is the amount of debt the company has on the balance sheet. Um, let's see. So, all right. Let's take a look at BNTX, BioNTech. Um, so BioNTech has just been all over the place, um, you know, since since July of 21. I mean, it's just been, for the most part, back and forth. Um, and you'll notice that it's got support, decent support right here at close to 195. So we did get a little bit of a bounce back yesterday. So low for yesterday was 198. Then the buyer stepped in back over $200. Um, but it, yeah, I mean, the volatility has just been incredible for BioNTech, right? This right here, rally of 134%, then a drop of close to 54% then a rally of 73%. It's just been very, very volatile, but the beta is also really high for the company. So, you know, support at 195. This is one of those stocks that I would trade, but I would obviously not hold for the long term yet. Um, you know, just given just given the valuation and the, the beta for the stock is incredibly high. Um, 
All right, so Steve, so my average on Palantir I think is, is much higher. It's definitely not where it's trading right now. So I am in the red for Palantir, but I think it's like in the 20s somewhere, like low 20s. I have to, re I have to double check, but I'll definitely let you know. Um, but now you can sleep at night. Um, so chip stocks, AMD, NVIDIA. Yeah, so I do own AMD. I don't own NVIDIA. Um, I think the valuation for both is really high right now. I think NVIDIA trades at a much higher valuation than, than AMD. For chip stocks, if you do want to consider something now, I think Qualcomm, Micron are two companies that still, and even TSMC, still trade at very low valuations relative to their competitors, relative to the earnings, revenue, so on and so forth. But NVIDIA, AMD, even Intel, I think Intel's got a great uh, potential for growth. But it's just like, uh, you know, Intel is like a whole new company right now. Under a new CEO, under new management, dividend yields, decent. Uh, but they're going to be spending a ton of money on infrastructure to build out their manufacturing and foundry business. So... It's uh, kind of like a hit or miss with Intel right now because they're just going through with this whole transition phase. I do like AMD. I love NVIDIA as well, but both of them trade at a little bit of a higher valuation. So I wouldn't really um, touch them right now. AMD, I'm still holding from $70. We did trim in the 140s, 150s, uh, but right now I'm just waiting to kind of add more uh, and possibly we'll do that roughly at the $100 range, 120 possibly. Um, so let's see. So what levels would you buy BNTX and Moderna? So it's kind of hard for me to pinpoint a level because I haven't really done a fundamental analysis on these companies. Most of the buy targets I have are based on some type of fundamental analysis on the back end, looking at the multiples and looking at the revenue growth, the earnings and all that stuff. Um, I don't know that for Moderna. Unfortunately, don't know that for BioNTech either. So the valuation is actually not bad. 13 times earnings under eight times sales, eight times cash flows and 10 times enterprise value of EBITDA. So Valuation for Moderna seems to be very, very attractive, in fact, at these levels. However, the profitability has been all over the place. So revenue growth has been decent, but uh, the company seems to be generating losses here. But the last couple of quarters have been very strong at over 60% profit margin. But the real question is, is this repeatable, right? Can the company actually do 68% margins again and again? And can they do it on a yearly basis? Uh, just because they've done it over the last couple of quarters, doesn't mean they're going to replicate that, obviously. So I, I really need to look into this company a little bit more. But just from a valuation standpoint, I think 186 is a reasonable support. Previous resistance where we got rejected three times before finally seeing a breakout here um, for, for Moderna. So this was kind of like an ascending triangle, um, right? So we were just uh, pushing up, coming down, pushing up, coming down, pushing up, coming down. So it's kind of like a higher low then finally got that breakout. Uh, and right now just down a little bit over 50%. So 186 is going to be that support. Um, for Moderna right now. For BNTX, I think that support is going to be at 195. Uh, this one was more like a kind of like a bullish pennant, so to speak, right here. So just coming down, then a big breakout, and then it's just coming down to 195. So I think they're both trading a relatively reasonable support here for BioNTech and Moderna both. Volatility is still up close to 1%. Let's take a quick look at the markets. NASDAQ flat, S&P flat, and the Dow Jones also flat. All sectors uh, seem to be flat here. Let's take a look at banks. Slightly higher. So we got Citigroup up another 1.8%. Wells Fargo, Bank of America, JP Morgan, Deutsche. Squares kind of bouncing up a little bit here. Let's take a look at EVs. So EVs, we got Tesla down over uh, one, almost 44 basis points here. So Tesla pulling back down to 1,060. Neo is green over 1.5% here. AMD and NVIDIA also slightly down. And uh, let's see. And then we got Lordstown up over 3%. I can't believe this stock's down to $3.30. I was just looking at a couple stocks here um, from the EV sector. I mean, I can't believe Hylion as is at like under $6 a share. I mean, this is just incredible. I mean, coming from highs of $57 per share. That is just painful to watch. Um Charge point just up over one point four percent. Blink charging X Bank Tesla now turned finally green. Ford Ford is another stock that's been doing really well. Uh, Microsoft support at three hundred five dollars. Yes, so Sitchin, I will be a buyer of Microsoft at three hundred five dollars. That is a support, possibly under three hundred bucks. I would love to get it, uh, get more. So this is like the overall trend for Microsoft. Let's just go over to the weekly chart here. Um, and overall, you'll notice that Microsoft has just been on a consistent rally, right? Uptrend, higher highs, higher lows. This, this is the type of patterns that you want to own, right? These are the type of companies that you want to own. This is, if you own Microsoft, this is exactly your portfolio line, right? If you look at your portfolio's performance, this is going to be it. 
right? So perfect, perfect trend up. Um, you know, very rarely we've seen Microsoft take a hit several weeks over. And since November 2021, Microsoft's really not done anything, right? It's just been moving sideways uh, in this range, in this very small sort of range. So $305 is going to be that first support right here, all the way down to 280 That's going to be that next support, kind of that intersection between the higher low and this uh, horizontal support. So I think that's going to be that next level to watch. Um, so far, going back over $14, that's good. Uh, validating that support here. So we've talked about how this $13.50, $14 level is a support for SoFi. So we briefly breached that level yesterday. So we came all the way down to, let's see, uh, $13. That was a low for yesterday before now pushing back higher up over 2.7%. So, you know, we'll see. We'll see if it does get a bounce back higher. I mean, historically, it has seen that bounce back not once, but twice. But just because it's happened in the past doesn't mean it'll happen again. But the probabilities definitely do suggest that we could see some bullish sentiment, some more upward momentum here. And the upside is, is tremendous, right? We're looking at over 70% plus upside um, for SoFi. So, all right, staying in Roku for long term. Stefan, that's great. That's awesome. Uh, so, all right, TCNF. Let's take a look at Trulieve. How's this stock doing? So just consolidating sideways, not really doing much. Uh, down a little bit. Of, well, this is delayed, so it should open here soon. 15 minutes. So in about a couple of minutes, this should open um, very soon. Uh, but for the most part, just been consolidating sideways, right? Even though they reported some very strong numbers. And I, you know, I'm fully prepared. And, you know, I'm one of those type of people that does kind of price in and look at worst case scenarios possibly when it comes to stocks. And I'm fully prepared for the stock to come down to $19, $20, possibly even down to $16 a share. So this right here is kind of like the worst case scenario for me for Trulieve. Uh, wouldn't be surprised if it does come down to those levels. I will be dollar cost averaging because I do like the fundamentals and the company and the management. Um, and this sector is tricky, right? This is the cannabis sector we're talking about. Uh, it's, it's, it's a tricky business to be in. Uh, the companies don't have easily accessible capital at, at use. So they have to kind of go through some shares, share dilution. They have to raise capital through some share issuance. Uh, and of course, with the regulations around cannabis, uh, it's got a long way to go, right? So I'm fully prepared to see that. Uh, let's take a look at DIC, DISCA for Nolus. So yeah, wow, 11% jump here for Discovery. So very strong move. I think it got an upgrade today, right? Could be mistaken. I, I yeah, there we go. So Bank of America upgrades discovery to buy from neutral. So we see several areas of potential revenue and cost synergies and are bullish on potential of a combined HBO Max and Discovery Plus DTC services. I think it's got a big upgrade today. Uh and you know, up over eleven percent. Support at twenty one twenty two, although it is hitting a resistance now. So I'm careful at these levels. So it's got a resistance roughly in this twenty nine dollar range. So we'll see if we actually do get rejected. Our size up there, just under 70. MACD has been pushing higher. So, you know, we'll see if you do get that rejection. Wouldn't be surprised if you do. Take a look at the low for the day, by the way. $28.99. So this is under $29 right now for, for Discovery. Um, so drafting straight up. That's that's great. A lot of stocks seem to be pushing higher right now. News up over 2.5%. We got AMD finally green. So let's take a look at the main watch list. And I do see more green now than I saw red. So Lemonade up 8%. AMC is up over 7 Trade Desk up over 6 Alibaba 4.7, 132. Very strong move to the upside. Uh, ARKG finally getting some life back. <laughs> Genomics pushing higher. Fubo TV is up over 3.8. We got Palantir Neo pushing up. So Truly is up over 2.7. Twitter, Tattooed Chef, Square. So yeah, I mean, not a, not a bad day, not a bad day. Well, this is considering that we had an absolutely brutal week so far. So I think it the markets um, need to kind of redeem themselves at least a little bit um, so that we can actually go into the weekend stable. <laughs> um, all right, guys, so I'm actually going to end it there. Uh, again, 30 minutes are up for me, but... As always, if you enjoyed this video, find it helpful, make sure that you do drop a like and subscribe if you're new here. Uh, check out the Patreon link down in the description below if you want to join our private Discord and of course get access to our buy and sell alerts. I have been buying some stocks. So yesterday I did buy some stocks like I bought Mara, Walgreens. Uh, I think I bought VUG, but I do have plans of buying a lot more in January and February. If you continue to see those dips, I do plan on buying a lot more. So if you want to get those alerts, make sure that you are 
uh, part of our Patreon. And of course, if you want to get access to our tutorials on fundamental technical analysis, that's also included for free for all of our members. So thank you so much for being here. Really appreciate you guys. Hope you have a fantastic weekend. I will see you guys Monday morning for the live stream without the glasses. Um, and of course, the screen time is still going to be limited. So I appreciate you guys' patience. Thank you for being here. Really appreciate you. And as always, happy investing. I'll see you guys in the next live stream.